fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Plainsville. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto left Mountain City, they headed north and they traveled slowly. For hours at a time, they stopped to give their horses a chance to graze and rest and regain their strength after the strenuous days of the past month. At last, when they came to a cool, green valley watered by mountain streams, they were five days from the nearest town. I don't think many people have been here, Tonto. It's real wilderness. Mm, not right. It looked like Wild Horse Valley, where you find silver. Yes, very much like it. Uh, maybe few Indians around here. No one else. Even those Indians would be friendly. They haven't any reason to be warlike. Isn't that right. How long we stay here? Huh? Well, it's nearly sunset. I think we'll make camp and spend the night. And we're not likely to find a better place. Uh, trees over there make good place for camp. Yes, Kimosabi. And tomorrow we start off for Plainsville. Uh. We only got there in another week at the rate we're traveling. Um, we take plenty of time. Well, there's no reason for hurry now. Scout and Silver deserve a little easy going for a... Hello. That was a rifle. Uh, who got rifle here? I don't know. Here, Silver. Scout, you come. That shot seemed to be fired from over there. That way in woods. I didn't think we'd have a... Hello. Look. Uh, let me see him. Indian. He's just standing there watching us. Uh, now I'm a raised rifle. He's going to fire into the air. Not up, Tonto. He's signaling to someone. Uh, you you hear him? Yes. And the Indian in woods. Many horse come this way. Steady, big fella. Hello. <coughs> We're going to ride toward them. There's no reason for them to attack us. Maybe you can speak their dialect. Uh, let me try. Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto guided their horses toward the woods, scores of redskins appeared from the sheltering trees and joined the one who had fired the rifle. The Indians stopped, watching the advance of the masked man and his companion. Twenty paces away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Oh, scout. Oh, oh, oh. oh. One of them is coming toward us. Ah. Him hold right hand up. That mean him friend. Man with face behind mask. He speaks English. Ah. You come after a long time. You bring more thunder stick? No, I didn't. You not bring? I've never been here before. Was there another man who brought you guns? Uh, other man hide face. Him bring thunder stick. You hide face. Why you not bring? I've uh, brought you something better. What that? 
Uh, take me to your village. What you bring? Well, you must take me to your village before I can show you. Uh, you wait. What is that? Uh, him talk to other Indian now. Out of someone who wore a mask brought them rifles. Because I wear a mask, they think I'm here with more. Got to get to their village and look around. Isn't that right? Got to find out more about this other masked man. Got to find out how many rifles they have and where they came from. Uh, somebody steal them from from army. Yes, the guns are practically new. And somewhere in this part of the country, soldiers may be needing them. You make promise to Indian. Yes, I know. You tell them you got something better than rifle. What you show them? We have field glasses in the saddlebag. We let them look through those. Ah. Uh, and they see the distant hills, but close to them, I think they'll be satisfied. That's right. They're a primitive tribe, but they aren't savage. Uh, here come Indian back. I hope they're going to take us to their village. You come, you follow. Fine. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Someone must have spent a lot of time with these Indians, Tonto. The leader's English is fairly good. Well, maybe leader not live here all time. Maybe him live another place, learn English there. It's possible, but he doesn't show any indication of it. Something strange about this, Kimosabi. Uh. Oh, yeah. Faster, Silver. Get him up, Count. Following the Indians, the Lone Ranger and Tonto went deeper and deeper into the forest. The ground rose in a steady incline, and the trees became so dense that there was a solid cover of interwoven branches overhead. It grew darker with each passing moment. Then the trees ended abruptly. The Lone Ranger and Tonto looked out on a stretch of level land on top of the mountain, walled in by dense forest on all sides. Smoke rose from a dozen small fires tended by squaws who squatted on the ground. And there were many huts made of branches and skins with mud packed around the sides. It's a permanent village, Tonto. I wonder how many people know that it's here. Mm, Tonto never hear of it. There aren't any signs that these people are fighters. They seem to be hunters and quite contented. Look at the skins drying out over there. Ah. The Indian we talked to seems to be in charge. Ah, uh, him leader. Now him come on foot. I'll dismount. Steady, Silver. Yep. Now you show big magic, like Thunderstick. Yes, I have it right here. Uh, just look through the glass. This magic brings the distant mountains close. Uh, big mountain close, me touch. Uh, you can't do that. Now it go back. Uh, turn the magic this way. Look again. Uh... Now the mountain's far, far away. <laughs> it good, it good, you come. I guess we want him over, Tonto. Uh, we go where him say. Lead, we follow. You come, this way. The Indian led the way to one hut, which was larger than the others. He flung aside a heavy buffalo skin that covered the opening. In the dim light of the day that was almost gone, the Lone Ranger saw a pile of furs in the center of the hut. You look. The masked man leaned close and examined them. Then he breathed an exclamation. Tonto. Uh-huh. Black fox pelts. Mm. There's a fortune here. Are these yours? All Indian catch. You take? I'm to take these? Uh, you take. Me keep magic. These pelts for the field glasses? Uh, me want bullet, too. But you have bullets. Uh, this is all. It's all in village. I see. I'll have to think it over, Chief. Will you leave us alone so we can make talk? Uh, me wait. Me wait outside. He doesn't have more than half a dozen bullets, Tonto. The ones he held in his hand. Uh, somebody give him rifle, not many bullet. My cartridges won't fit the rifles. There wouldn't be any danger in giving him a few just before we left. Not right. But that won't be until tomorrow. Tonight we'll look around and learn all we can about these people. We still have to find out where those army rifles came from. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left the Indian village on the plateau the following afternoon, taking the furs with them. They made the trip to Plainville in three days, and then, just outside of the town, they stopped in a small woods near a stream of water. We may camp here, Tonto. Steady, boy. I'm going to take off the mask and disguise myself, and I'll go into town. Ah. Uh, me unload furs? Yes. Make sure they're well hidden. Ah. You think feller who take rifle to Indian come from Plainsville? He was in Plainsville. I'm certain of that. That piece of brass we saw tied to a cord around the Indian leader's neck came from there. It's a check from the Plainsville Hotel. Ah. And what you do in town? I'm going to sell one of the pelts. Oh, maybe that plenty dangerous. Well, why, Kimosabe? Other feller who wear a mask not want anybody else buy fur from Indian. Of course he doesn't. 
I want him to know that someone has. And then what happened? I'm hoping that we'll find out who he is. It's our only chance. You buy furs in here? Yeah. I do a little trading. Uh, what do you think of this pelt? Mm. It's a good one. Well, I'm not saying it ain't. Question is, how much do you want for it? Well, uh, what do you say to ten dollars? I say it's a deal. Here's your money right here. Stranger, are you loco? What's the matter? Letting that pelt go for ten dollars. Now, don't you go sticking your nose into this, Lefty. We made a bargain. Here's your money. Fine. Fine, he says. It's highway robbery, that's what it is. I don't think so. There are plenty more pelts where that one came from. Where's that? The forest, south of here. Did you trap that fox yourself? No, uh, I didn't. Then who did? Why should I tell you that? Listen, mister, do you mean it? Can you get any more pelts like this? I may be getting some more. I'll take all you get. Well, I'll be staying at the hotel for a few days. Keep in touch with me. I sure will, mister. I sure will. That evening at the hotel, the Lone Ranger talked with the clerk. You're sure there aren't any new army posts around here? No, well, there's Fort Benton to the east and uh, Fort Hall to the south. But they're mighty long way. Yes, I know. Say, you're getting to be a popular gent around town, mister. Well, how's that? Well, lots of folks have been dropping in to ask about you. Ever since you let Salters have that pelt for ten bucks. If you got any more of them, there's plenty of folks that'd like to take them off your hands at that price. Was well, that so? Not just storekeepers, but... Oh, almost forgot. There's an old lady waiting to see you right now. An old lady? Mm-hmm. She handed me this note and told me to give it to you. Here. Well, thanks. I guess she'd like a fur neck piece. <laughs> Now, where is she? <laughs> right over there in the parlor. Excuse me, please. Please, please close the door. So, we meet again. And again, you're in disguise. Sitting alone in the room was the girl whose face was still a mystery to the Lone Ranger. The girl who had aided him so often in his fight against the outlaw legion known as the Black Arrow. Now her face and her clothes were those of an old woman, but she made no effort to disguise her voice. Please believe me, Lone Ranger. We've nearly reached the end. The end? The final end of the Black Arrow. Remember those days when hordes of men, outlaws, met in caves? Yes, I remember. One man, his face always hidden, gave the commands. Do you remember? Yes. And then when most of the gang were trapped and turned over the law, there were the five organizers, ringleaders of the Black Arrow against whom nothing could be proved. Yes, I remember them well. Four of them are in jail. The first, a railroad man. The next, a gold mine syndicate operator. A Drexel. And then the cattleman. And you saw him put in jail. Two weeks ago, Jacob Webster followed him. There's just one left. His name is Bronson Page. I don't know how we're going to get evidence against him. And he's the most important of them all. He's the man who had the inside track in Washington. The man who pulled all the strings. He is? Yes, and he's the man, the man who gave the commands, the voice in the cave. Bunsen Page? Yes. Are you sure of this? Oh, I know it to be the truth. He handled many purchases for the government. Did he buy rifles for the army? Oh, yes. You know how all five of those men worked together? Yes. And how the gold mine accounted for the huge profits? The railroads could handle all shipments, move the goods of the crooked organizations. Rifles and other supplies bought and paid for by the government were traded to Indians for furs. But you... What brought you to Plainsville? One of our operators in Washington found letters addressed to Bronson Page. Those letters came from Plainsville. And I have furs? I know. Of... But you didn't know that army rifles were given the Indians for those furs. And those rifles came from here, from Plainsville. Oh, you're so close to the end of the trail. You're close to Bronson Page. But no one has threatened him and lived. Please be careful. Close to Bronson Page? He's here. Here in Plainsville? Here. In this hotel. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. In the parlor of the hotel, the Lone Ranger was told that Bronson Page, the last survivor of the Black Arrow organization, was not only in the town of Plainsville, but in the hotel. I didn't see his name on the hotel register. No, it isn't there. I don't know what name he's using, but I do know he's here. I saw him a little while ago. Where? In the hotel lobby. Did he see you? Oh, yes, but I don't think he recognized me. Would he know you if you weren't disguised? Oh, I'm sure he would. He's been in Washington a lot. He's had so many people reporting to him. Surely he knows about me and the work I've been doing. Then we'll have to... May I come in? <gasps> of course. This is a public room. I have a friend with me. Uh, step in, please. That's Bronson Page. Steady. Come in, Lefty. What'll we do? Keep your gun ready. I'm going to have a talk with this man. Right. I understand you've been selling black fox pelts. Oh, what about it? Where did you get the pelt you sold? Why? I want to know. <laughs> well, what if I don't tell you? <laughs> I'll find a way to have my question answered. Well, the one I sold was just one of many. One of many? You see, Indians have been hunting the black foxes. They're willing to trade. Oh, I see. Do you want to know where those Indians live? Well, I would here, like... Here, here, I'll draw a sketch for you. See, he's acting a heap different than I figured he would. Let me show you. All right, here's the town, you see. Now, due south, about five days' travel, there's a valley with dense forests on the hills to the east. If you can penetrate those forests and reach the top of the hill, you'll find a tribe of Indians in a permanent camp. Well, that's where the pelts come from. You seem mighty anxious to explain this to me. Well, you asked a question, I'm answering it. You're an Easterner, and I want to be sure you understand exactly where the black fox came from. I see. I think I made the location clear enough. Huh. Seems to me you have, mister. And I don't know why. These men certainly aren't very polite. Who are you? Well, the lady's from the East. She's here to look up old friends. Mm. Uh, just as you came in, I was trying to explain that her friend was outside the hotel. I saw him a little while ago. Now may I go? Of course. These men won't stop you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Boss. Let her go, Lefty. Good night. Good night. girl understood the Lone Ranger and hurried from the hotel. Outside, on the side of the building near the room where she had just met Paige, Tonto was waiting. I was sure I'd find you here, Tonto. He tried to tell me to come here and meet you. Oh, me here. And he told me how to find the Indian village. Army rifle there. Maybe that evidence against the Paige feller. Oh, so that's it. But it would take nearly two weeks to get there and back. Wait. We go close to wind again. Hear what feller inside say. Now, there's no use beating around the bush, stranger. I want information from you. You've got the skins from that Indian village. And I want them. I suppose you're ready to pay for them. Well, that all depends. I'll be fair with you. But I won't be stung. Is that clear? Quite clear. You know what the Indians wanted for the pelts? What? Cartridges for the rifles you gave them the last time. Well? well I didn't have cartridges to fit the army rifles. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you didn't. So you didn't get all the fur after all, eh? Well, not all of it. There's not much left. You mean you have furs? Would you... They aren't in the Indian village. You see, I made a sort of deal with them. What kind of a deal? Uh, I'm to meet an Indian near town and get the pelts from him. Now, all I want is a good supply of cartridges. I see. Can you get them? Maybe I can. Tell me where to find the redskin and I'll make a deal. <laughs> where do I come in? I'll see that you're taken care of. I think it'll be better if we go together to meet this Indian. He uh, wouldn't know you. Oh, he wouldn't, eh? It's mighty funny, because I met those Indians once before. Uh, this Indian wouldn't know you. But I anyway, know... Anyway, we're going to meet him together. Well, come on, then. Well, uh, we can't meet him tonight. I'll make it tomorrow night. Why not tonight? He's going to meet me at Gopher Spring shortly after dark tomorrow night. All right, then. I'll be there. And so will I. We'll divide the pelts after we get them. We'll see. Mm. Gopher Spring shortly after dark tomorrow night. I'll be there. Tonto. Uh, me here. Paige has admitted being in the Indian village and giving them army rifles. Uh, Did the Lone Ranger know that you were going to hear what he said? Uh, him tell Tonto, stand close by. Then he wants you to be at Gopher Spring tomorrow night. That's right. And have the pelts to meet Paige. So we had to make a plan on the spur of the moment. Uh, He's tried to tell us what we should do. And 
and we do our part. Later that night, two figures crept through the hall in the hotel's second floor. One whispered softly. Hold the knife, Ruddy Lefty. When I get the door open, throw it straight at the bed. Understand? Sure. No sound at all. With him out of the way, we'll deal directly with the Indian tomorrow night. I'm ready. Get the door open and keep it quiet. Right. Bronson Page gripped the latch of the door to the Lone Ranger's room and moved it slowly, a fraction of an inch at a time. There was not the slightest sound, not even the creak of a hinge as he pushed the door inward. When it was half open, Lefty saw the form beneath the blanket on the bed. Cold steel glittered in his hand. He started forward, but suddenly... Somebody coming up the stairs. Come on. I got time to throw it. This way, down the back. Yeah. It was a good throw. Get him square. To your room. Tomorrow we'll meet that Indian at Gopher Spring alone. Gopher Spring was in a clearing about a half mile from town. Surrounded by woods, it was an ideal secret meeting place. Tonto went there shortly after sundown with the furs. He concealed them in a thicket and then sat on the ground beside the spring and waited, but not for long. Presently, two men rode up with their saddlebags bulging. Oh, 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 there, boy. Oh, There's the engine. Hey there, engine. You waiting for someone? Uh, me wait for feller at mask. Oh, I'm here in this place. Uh, me not know you. Hold on. You're supposed to have something with you. Where is it, Redskin? Uh, me got it. What do you have? Uh, me got fur. Plenty good fur. Uh, meet here and make swap. I don't see the furs. That's right. And me not see mask man. Boss, you got the mask you use in your pocket. Why don't you put it on? <laughs> all right, I will. Uh, wait, Indian. I'll show you the mask if that's all you want. Uh, you show. Uh, one minute now. There. Now, do you remember me? You feller who bring thunder stick? Yes, yes, of course. Now you got bullet? Right here in these saddlebags. Let uh, me see them. You show. Unpack them, Lefty. Show the redskin the cartridges. Uh, last time we get bullet, them not good. Me be sure these bullet good. The last man didn't have the right kind of cartridges. Yeah, and take a look at these cartridges. These are the ones you want. Uh, how me be sure? Now, look here, Indian. These are the right kind of cartridges. Army bullet? That's what these are. You prove these army bullet. How oh, in thunder can I prove it? Where army these come from? There's no army near here. These came all the way from the east. Oh, uh, maybe them not good. Of course they're good. Besides, I haven't seen the furs yet. How do I know you've got them at all? You look in underbrush. Find fur there. Take a look where he's pointing, Lefty. Right, I'll see if he's telling the truth. Fur there, all right. Here they are, boss. Now, bring them out. Let me see them. There's a heap of them here. As many as we got the last time. Good. Yeah, you got more bullet? Hey, look at these. These are dandy pelts, boss. Hmm. Me want more bullet. You've got four saddlebags full of them. What more do you want? Want more. Where you get more? Stand ready, Lefty. I savvy. Indian, are you ready to make a deal? I'm uh, me ready. Can you speak for the chief, or will you have to see your friends before we make a deal? All other Indian in village. That's... But I wanted to make sure. Huh? Well, what you do? Can't you guess? All right, Lefty, let him have it. I wouldn't. Oh, my hand, my gun hand. Keep it, some weight. Go for it. That's what you need. Get on your feet, Paige. You're not hurt. For you, Lefty, my bullet never touched your hand. Who? Who are you? I'm the man you tried to kill last night. Not you. The one at whom Lefty threw the knife. Too bad for you that I wasn't in the bed. That... That mask. You're... You're the Lone Ranger. I'm the second masked man who called on the Indians and traded furs with them. The Lone Ranger? Boss, boss, this is the one that was... The one that spoiled everything I started. At last page, we found the man who gave orders to the members of the Black Arrow. The man who bought rifles and ammunition for the army and shipped them to his outlaw legion. Now, wait, I can explain everything. When the Black Arrow was smashed, he traded the supplies bought for the army for furs. I wanted to talk to you. I'll make you rich. I'll make you powerful. If you and I work together, we can... There's one thing I want, Paige. And that's to see the end of the Black Arrow. You're the last of the Legion. All right. What are you going to do with me? What can you prove? You've kept yourself well guarded, Paige. But this time, you're finished. 
Come on out, Marshal. We're right on the job. Here's the law, Page. These men heard you admit trading supplies that belong to the Army. The woman you saw in the hotel last night has already sent other lawmen to bring some of the Indians from the village. Yes, and those redskins and the rifles you gave them will be more evidence against you. We wanted to be sure it was you who called on those Indians. You admitted it was. Hang it all. He suspected we'd make a play tonight from last night. Didn't you? I knew you'd try to get me out of the way, and you could make your own deal for the first. Get the handcuffs on those two boys. We'll take them away for keeps. On top of everything else, we can prove attempted murder. Marshal, here's a fortune in black fox furs. Yeah, I know. I reckon they're yours. Well, they were trapped by the Indians. They belong to those Indians. What'll we do with them? Sell them. Take the cash and buy things the Indians need. Send teachers and missionaries into the Indian country. Build schools and churches to settle the West. I'll see that it's done. Well, Tonto, we're through in this part of the country. Ah, uh, Scout and Silver, ready to ride. Take those two into town, boys, and if they try to escape, shoot them. Uh, there was a woman. Uh, where is she? She gave me a message for you. Oh? She's going south. She said not to try and find her. Maybe someday your trails would cross again. I see. She said to tell you she'd sooner not say goodbye. When the time comes that she can help you, you'll hear from her again. Thanks, Marshal. I wonder when that will be. Steady, big fella. Hello, fellow. Huh? Be ready. Oh, Silver! Away! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>